Welcome to the second video. In this video, we will show you how to install MLflow in your local system. And I will quickly show you how to add the login to your Jupyter Notebook. We will use the Jupyter Notebook Alexei created for the previous section. And then we will show you how to visualize this MLflow UI. Uh, for this, I have prepared requirements file. For this section, you only need to install these requirements, which you can do with pip. In my case, I prefer to use cond environments, this, right? Because if you run pip installed with these requirements, they will be installed in your system. And maybe this will mess up with your local configuration. So instead of that, it's a good practice to create an environment. So in, in my case, I created this environment that is called experiment tracking amp, and I'm using Python 3.9. If you run this command, you will get the environment up and running. You will need to activate it. So that's what I'm going to do. Once you activate the environment, you just need to run pip install minus r requirements.txt. And in my case, all the packages were already installed. So if you want to check it, just do pip list. And then you will see that all these, you know, Jupyter is installed. You have also Pandas should be here. And of course, MLflow. That's all. Now, if you run MLflow in your terminal, you should be able to get access to the MLflow CLI with the commands that I show you in the previous video. Let's launch the MLflow UI, but for this, I want to show you a different way of launching it. This is the command you need to use instead. Before I show you that if you run MLflow UI, you will get access to the UI, right? But when we try to access the model stuff, it failed, right? Because it says that there was no backend configure. Instead of that, we will add this extra command, which says backend store URI, and we will pass this URI. SQLite colon, then there is three slashes, MLflow DB. This basically is telling MLflow that we want to store all the artifacts and metadata in SQLite, which is a backend, one of the alternatives for the backend store. Let's do it. And now I'm going to copy this and open it in a browser. As you can see here, in your case, probably you won't see this. You will see an empty uh, experiment. In my case, it is, I've been running some experiment runs before. It's using the information from the SQL database to render all the experiments that I have run in the past. And also, if you click here in models, I can access it, and there is no error that we saw before. Okay, now let's go to Visual Studio. Here I have opened MLOps SumCap repository. And in this folder, Zero one intro, you will find Alexei's notebook for the duration prediction. I will just copy paste this here and in the folder Zero 03 train experiment tracking. I will just copy it here and we will modify this file. I also downloaded the data for that is used to train this model. This is just the green trip data for January 2021 and February 2021, which is basically training and validation sets. And then, yes, I think that that's all. You will need to create this folder models because the model is being saved in this folder. Otherwise, you will see an error. So let's execute this. First, I'm going to select the kernel. This is a Python environment that I created for this part of the course. As you can see, it's Python 3.9. If we execute this, yes, we have the same version. We'll import pandas, pickle, seaborn, scikit-learn. I will add one more with MLflow. OK, in order to include MLflow, you just need to import the library. Next, you need to set the tracking URI. So set tracking URI. So this is basically is needed because we are running MLflow with the SQLite backend. Here is the name for this part. Set uh, tracking URI and then MLflow, you need to set also the experiment, right? If I put anything here, right? Uh, I don't know, my brand new experiment, MLflow basically will check if this experiment exists. And if it doesn't exist, it will create the experiment and then assign all the runs to that experiment. If it already exists, of course, it's not going to create it. It's just going to append the runs to this existing experiment. We already have an experiment here now. So let's create one. Uh, I will call it just New York City Taxi Experiment. If we run this, you can see here that MLflow detected that this experiment doesn't exist, basically created it. Furthermore, 
here you can see it's uh, attempting to save the artifacts in this location, assigning the experiment ID one. Let's go back to this UI. And here we can see that there is a new experiment with ID one, which is New York City taxi experiment. Let's go back, go back to Visual Studio. Now I'm just gonna execute this. So first load the data, the pre-processing, this created the, the, the visualization about the prediction and actual. This is training and validation set. I'm just gonna run it, you know, uh, without modifications. And towards the end, we will start adding the code, the extra code. So here, okay, Alexei first trained this linear regression model and achieve 7.75 root mean square error. After that, yes, here we will save the, the model. Remember to create this folder called models. Finally, there is this lasso model, which achieve a poor performance compared to linear regression, uh, but still let's try to train it. Here we can see the results are, are worst. There are many things we can do here. One thing is that we are training different versions of the model and we are modifying this file constantly, right? For example, here I try 0.01, but maybe next time I will try 0.1 and see what happened, right? And yes, so the results is, is worse, but the thing is I'm, I'm not keeping track of the history. The first thing I wanted to show you is how to, you know, use MLflow to do that. A simple way of, of adding tracking to this is you can start with defining a new run. MLflow start run. Then everything inside this width statement will be associated with the current run. Here I'm going to define maybe a parameter, which is alpha, because now I'm just playing with alpha, right? Okay, 0 0.01. And here I'm just going to pass alpha. Next, what I'm going to do is to start logging information about this run. For example, with MLflow set tag, okay, I can create tags. And these stacks are going to be associated to, to the current run. And one example could be, as I mentioned before, the name of the developer, right? Maybe this will be useful later if I'm working in a big team or I want to find, you know, maybe some runs from a specific person. I can filter later the run based on this stack. Then I'm going to also pass, yes, here I want to log also the information about the data set. Then I'm going to log. Param, remember that param includes hyperparameters of the model, but also any extra information that you consider relevant because they have an effect on the model's performance. To me, it's really important to know which data was used for training and for validation. In a super simplified version of data versioning, <laughs> I'm going to just pass the, the path, right? So here is train data path, right? I already know that the month of February is the validation date, right? So here, valid data path. Again, I know this is not perfect. We, we can do much better with this, but at least it's something, right? At least we know that we were using this file. And in the future, if something, you know, we see that the metrics of the model are much worse or much better, then we may realize that the problem is that we were using different data sets. I'm going to also log the uh, parameter alpha, right? Here, log param alpha. And last but not least, I will also like to keep track of the performance of the error of the model, right? In this case, we are using root mean square error, mlflow.log metric, and here rmca and rmca. Okay, let's try to execute this. Oops, there is a typo here. I'm going to run it once more. Okay, so if we go to the MLflow UI, here you can see that you know there is a notification that there are new runs. So we can click on refresh. The first run was failed, right? It didn't finish successfully, let's say, because uh, of the typo I had. But then we can check the second one. I'm going to delete this one. Let me maybe show this a bit bigger. There are a bunch of uh, information that was collected by MLflow. So first you can see here the start time, right? How long ago it started and the duration. It took 8.3 seconds to train the model. We didn't provide a run name. There is nothing here. Then there is the name of the user. This is my user in the computer. For the source code, MLflow is not able to take the name of the Jupyter notebook, but there is a workaround 
I will put the link to this uh, workaround later. But for now, it's just assuming that you were using a file called IPAL kernel launcher. This is maybe something that uh, can be improved in the future the for the library. We have the, the, the list of models and the version of the code, right? Again, in this case, because we are using Jupyter Notebook, it was enabled to detect the version of the code. We didn't log the model, so here we don't see the models. Then finally, we have the metric, right? In this case, it's root mean square error. Actually, if you click here, you will have access to the run details. And again, this is the same information. You have the starting date, the duration, the files, users, and here a list of parameters, right? We use alpha 0 0.01, and then we, we have the training data path and the validation data path. We have the metric. In this case, it's not very interesting because it's just one number, but if you have a model that is trained on epochs, you can log the metric across time. And then here you will have a nice plot of the, lear the learning cure, basically, right? The, how the, the metric was uh, improving over time. And then the tags that I mentioned before. Okay. We just finished the second video. We show you how to prepare the local environment to use MLflow. I also show you how to install the MLflow client and how to configure a backend in order to get access to the MLflow model registry. And finally, I quickly show you how to add some basic login into an existing notebook and uh, how MLflow renders this information in the MLflow UI. In the next video, we will show you an example that is a bit more complicated to basically run a hyperparameter tuning on your model and to log all this information into MLflow.